Will you ever consider a potential from the internet? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What are you saying, people? Long time no chats. Well, to be honest, I always hop on and chat here, but I haven't done a QA in a very, very long time. I think the last one I done was six months ago. So I have some questions left over from my Instagram question box. I'm going to pick a few, the most popular ones. You probably know some of them, and I'm going to answer them. So, first, when are you getting married? I'm going to skip that one. I'll answer that one in the end. How to figure out what you're good at and how to make a career out of it. You can make a career out of anything, to be honest. And you can literally brainwash yourself into liking whatever you're doing right now. Like people have brainwashed themselves into liking 9 to 5, slaving away, saying that it's risk free. When really we know that there is nothing in life that's risk free. You can literally cross the road and there's risk in that. Maybe you'll get hit by a car. You know, these are all aqdar. All it is is... You need to tie your camel and have to work on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I am going on a tangent. I would say try as many things as possible. It's a very, very, very generic, easy answer. How are you going to know that you're great at making videos? You're not going to know until you crack on. And the more you do, the more opportunities you take, the more experiences you have, the more you can tick off the box. Tried videos, nah, I don't like it. Tried horse riding, nah, I don't like it. I tried this, tried that, tried swimming, ba 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 ba. Engineering, it's the one. Yes, this is what I want to do. Especially if you're young, now is your time. Do as many things as possible. How to truly have hikmah? Hikmah is something that is given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ So, yeah. Growing up Islam felt forced. I learned to love it for myself. That's great. I'm always against forcing your kids. But I also think that it is still important because they do not know what's good for them. They'll thank you. Like, for example, for me, I felt forced going to Quran school when I was younger. It's not something that I particularly enjoyed waking up at like six in the morning every single day, five days a week. And then Saturday, Sunday, I didn't have off. I'd go to a Libyan school to study Arabic. In hindsight, it's the best thing that my parents done. Forced me to do something like that. But there needs to be understanding. There needs to be a level of you give the proof. You give qala Allah, qala Rasul. Why do we do this? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this in this specific verse. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this. And can you understand why if we didn't implement this and that then society would fall apart and you're like oh, okay you force it both understanding that's something i'm grateful for alhamdulillah but it's good that you found it yourself but i still rebel in ikhlas how to fix i don't know what you mean by rebel in ikhlas first of all second of all i'm not a sheikh so i don't know why you're asking for a fix but what i would say is with ikhlas i would say do more in private than in public once you have foundations that are deep deep into the ground the roots that are firm and planted firm they're not seen. You can't see these icebergs. Do you understand? And that will keep you firm and that will keep you on the correct path. ta'ala. That's number one. Number two, also always remember death because once you neglect the idea that you are a ticket funeral, we're all going to die. You are going to be in 10, 20, 30 years or maybe tomorrow after tomorrow, next week in that grave it means your time is limited on this earth so when you're praying and you want to increase the speed in your prayer your nafs is telling you let's go come on you need to just have discipline no this will benefit me this is probably one of the only things that's going to benefit me in the real life the next life the hereafter you know because this life is once you just have that concept in your mind i think it's easier because that is hindsight. That is 2020 vision. Advice for a 16-year-old. Do as many things as possible. Take on as many opportunities. Pick up as many skills as possible. Rasulullah says, اقتنم خمسا قبل خمس شبابك قبل هرمك. Your youth before old age. And last but definitely not least, probably one of the most important concepts is learn your religion. Learn your religion is very important, especially in these times, the times of fitan. Wallahi. And it's going to get progressively worse and worse as we go along. Every year that goes by, the trials and tribulations are going to increase because the Prophet says, لا تقوم الساعة حتى يكثر الجهل وتكثر الفتن. So if you take that hadith and you see that the Prophet has coupled ignorance with fitan. Why? Because when you're ignorant, you can curse the people that don't deserve to be cursed, kill the people that don't deserve to be killed, and take from people that you shouldn't take from. Trust people that you shouldn't trust. Because you are ignorant. And part of fitna as well is changing the haqaq, changing the truth, flipping the script. 
الله سبحانه وتعالى says لقد ابتغوا الفتنة من قبل وقلبوا لك الأمور they flipped it and how are you going to know you're not going to know unless you are equipped with knowledge uh, علي بن أبي طالب says uh, لا يعرف الحق بالرجال truth is not known by knowing individuals knowing men why because لا يؤمن على الحي من الفتنة I mentioned that on, on one of my last videos people can change اعرف الحق تعرف أهله if you know the truth you know who the truth lies with and people change but the truth never changes the truth is always the same so i'm going to emphasize this man learn your religion and to anyone anyone even for myself like this i'm advising myself as well how to make your videos authentic one of the main ways to make your videos authentic is definitely ripping off as many people as you can at the start so let's say for example you like your hebu series videos that i just Address myself in third person, I did. <laughs> Let's say you like my videos. Download my video and use it as a template and literally copy every single shot. Now, creatively, you don't even need to use that side of your brain. Just focus on the tools. All you need to do is replicate every single shot that I got. And through that, you're going to familiarize yourself with the editing suite. You're going to familiarize yourself with the camera. You're going to familiarize yourself with getting certain shots. And slowly but surely you're going to build up the tools and the skills you're going to start learning how to use the hammer and chisel then you're going to be doing your own work your own piece of art so creatively you're not going to waste your time this actually translates into so many different crafts let's say the last video for example i was speaking about replicating a reciter do i want you to replicate a reciter or do i want you to find your own voice i want you to find your own voice but when you pick up the tools again tajweed maharaj then you listen to a certain reciter through you listening to so many different reciters you're going to find your own tone you're going to find your own voice and you're not going to have to copy anyone after that but at the start it's just better it's a guideline almost you don't want to copy it inch by inch but at the start i recommend doing it and then when you've ripped off all these artists you yourself will find your own flow you'll find your own voice you'll find your own way and style and it will be an amalgamation of all these people put into you and for you to get that is through consistency, is through putting in the work, is through doing and getting through as many projects as possible. And then finally, you'll find your own, you know, authentic way of expressing yourself through video, whether it be through B-roll, camera movement, color, sound, design. That's going to be up to you and in what you like and enjoy in the editing process. You're going to maybe love color grading. So your whole thing is going to be about color and you're going to set the mood and you're going to express yourself through color. Or it can be just pure black and white. But you're going to be focused on composition. Your compositions will be just absolutely sick. Or it can be a mix of all these things and all these aspects and styles. You're not going to find these things until you try and until you do and bang out as many videos as possible. Camera I recommend for beginners. I would say your phone. And a lot of people know this answer. And if you're an OG, you know this answer. Your phone's amazing, man. And they're getting stronger and faster and better. And it's just very, 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 very stupid not to get cracking with your phone your phone first of all shoots in hdr so you don't even have to worry about exposure it shoots portrait mode so you don't even have to think about the aperture and setting a certain bokeh in the background it does it for you it focuses automatically it has a built-in stabilizer and they're getting so good that they might even catch up with the camera manufacturers the only difference is the sensor size the sensor size is very tiny on the phones and on the cameras they're big but the way they are improving the software to actually match the hardware is absolutely insane and to just milk as much as they can from the sensor. So it's definitely pushing the envelope for innovation and hopefully the camera companies start including some software bits. So then there's your phone. And then if you're to get one of those beginner cameras, you're not going to have stabilization. You're going to struggle with manually setting everything up, pulling focus, exposing properly, setting the shutter speed. But whereas with the phone, it has that all sorted for you. So then you can focus on story. And then when you get really good at story, you're like, yeah, cool. I can get my first camera now. And then you can learn the small intricate details. And to be honest, you can even do that within the apps on the phone where you can shoot raw and set everything to your creative stylistic needs it makes no sense to get a beginner camera when you have a phone especially if it's a really really good phone because these phones right now to be honest they're literally cameras that can call and text it's insane a dua that you always use i think one of the main duas that have helped me so much man is Allahumma ah bro that dua i literally feel like that's changed my life that's it learn it save it and say it every single day and you'll find yourselves in settings that you would be real cool with before 
But I don't know, after doing this dua and after being consistent with it, places that you were comfortable being in, you're no longer comfortable. People you were comfortable hanging around with, you're no longer comfortable hanging around with because they take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you love what He loves and makes you hate what He hates. And this dua, I've been, I think I've, I've been saying it every single day and I think, inshallah, I'll say it until the day I die because it's a dua that de has definitely changed my life. And a scary ayah. Oof. A scary ayah. فَتَزِلَّ قَدَمٌ بَعْدَ ثُبُوتِهَا Oof, that's part of an ayah, self the full ayah, but that specific part of the ayah is scary, man. Allah didn't say بَعْدَ ذَبْذَبَتِهَا or بَعْدَ نِفَاقِهَا Like after its hypocrisy or after its wavering. He said بَعْدَ ثُبُوتِهَا After it's been firmly placed that this foot will slip. So may Allah protect us. But ثَبَات uh, is, it's not easy, especially in this day and age. Prophet says الْقَابِضُ عَلَى دِينِهِ كَالْقَابِضُ عَلَى الْجَمْرِ Imagine holding on to a hot coat. It's not easy, man. ثَبَات is Aziz. And for you, if you are on the path, Definitely don't feel arrogant, don't feel better than anyone because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave you hidayah, gave you guidance. So it's very important to remember that. And staying firm is not by listening to these lectures and motivational speeches and all that kind of stuff. It's by taking action. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ فَعَلُوا مَا يُعَظُونَ بِهِ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَأَشَدَّ تَثْبِيتًا And... We all need to make dua. This is another dua that you need to make to stay firm. And if there was anybody that didn't need that dua, it would have been the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he made that dua consistently. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala dinik. Yeah, man, that's a scary, scary ayah. Fatazilla qadamu ba'da thubutiha. I have a friend that's always sinning and he always commits the big sins. How can I advise him? We all sin anyways. We all sin in the end of the day. I would say approach it with wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa alayhi salam to speak softly to Pharaoh. Obviously when you're advising him. So be very soft in your approach at the beginning. And yeah man, if he's still on it and stuff, I would say just get a new mate. Do you know what's mad? One of the major sins and one of the kabair that most of us have done And it's very rare because it's been normalized in our society today. You're thinking now nah, I've never drank alcohol, I've never committed zina, I've never done X, Y, Z. But backbiting is one of the kabair. That's one of the big sins. So to whoever asked that question, think about it. Have you committed that? Umar ibn Khattab says, Be accountant for yourself before you are accounted for. But obviously it's very important to advise. We are the ummah of Al-Amr bil-Ma'roof and Nahi al-Munkar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil-Ma'roof wa tanahuna al-Munkar. But yeah man, reflecting on the ghibah thing, some group chats, some majalis won't be what they are. They have zero banter because there's just no gossip. There's no backbiting. There's no spilling the tea. And um, people do it on a daily and some people it's just, it's part of their life. It's something that has to be done. There's no buzz without spilling the tea. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا يَقْتَبْ بَعْبُكُمْ بَعْضًا And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked his companions, رضي الله عنه, he goes, أَتَدْرُونَ مَا الْغِيبَ Do you know what غِيبَ is? They said, قَالُوا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَعْلَمْ قَالَ ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا يَكْرَهُ You mentioning your brother with something that he hates. And uh, it's so funny when people backfire a lot of the times. Be like, yeah, but you know it's true, bro. But like, you know I'm speaking facts. And they actually asked this to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. قَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَانَ فِيهِ مَا نَقُولُ قَالَ إِنْ كَانَ فِيهِ مَا تَقُولُ فَقَدْ اغْتَبْتَ He already backbiting him. خلاص, that's what backbiting is. He dislikes what you're saying about him. That is backbiting. That's the definition. وَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ فِيهِ فَقَدْ بَهَتَّ It's just better to stay silent. And whenever I think about people who genuinely inspire me in terms of character and khuluq, usually, actually, I can never, not even once, think of a time that I've heard them backbite. And even me saying that, how insane is that? Like these people genuinely inspire me. And that's like one of the kabair, mad. It's, that's how normalized it's become nowadays. How to get consistent work as a freelancer. Freelancing in the beginning is usually feast or famine. There's no other way about it. You're either gonna have big 
fat paydays or it's just going to be a hiatus for a while and you're just going to have to get used to it then when you start setting up certain processes and systems to generate leads that's going to be different you're going to have a consistent amount of work coming in every single month and if you don't have that get to know if you have clientele already you can always approach them for more business you can always cross sell upsell and add more value to them so if you have clientele already you already know the problems that they face you already know what they need you already know where you can add value if you're switched on can i suggest a few things that may increase their sales may increase their engagement may increase their traction so there's so much that you can add to the table when you're familiar with the client's needs and their problems and their wants and how you can add value to them so focus on current business rather than finding new business and then there's retainer contracts so it's a contract for maybe 12 months six months and they offer you consistent work at a reduced rate but it's consistent and you're gonna have it come in every single month and once you've milked that i would say produce content online as well it's very very important because it's not about who you know but also who knows you in today's day and age there's a lot more to this question i feel like i can make a whole video on this to be honest make videos not video like i can probably make four or five videos on this because every single one of these, you can go into just great detail. Your article is already pre-written, pre-ordained. So don't stress. And the Prophet وسلم, he says, لو أنكم تتوكلون على الله حق توكله لا رزقكم كما ترزق الطير تغدو خماسا وتروح بطانا. So have to and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the sustainer and he is the razzaq, ul al mateen. Should I end the Q&A? Right, I was going to end the Q&A, but I'm going to crack on with some more questions. I'm going to find some more questions to answer. Because I feel like this video is going to be 15 minutes and people just don't like it when the videos are short. So I'll try and make them longer. Or maybe I can just do a part two. Did I answer the marriage question? Will you ever consider a potential from the internet? Yeah. I don't know. It depends. Yeah, I'd say I would, yeah. I would consider a potential thing from the internet. Potential wifey. Right, let me go find some more questions. Are you on Spotify? No, I'm not. What would you advise your audience? I have this running joke where I just pull up and be like, here, listen. Like, oh, what did I do? Nah, listen, be honest with me. Don't don't be upset. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I always do it. What? Why, what did I do? Nah, man, fear Allah, bro. What did I do? Did I do anything? Nah, I'm just telling you to fear Allah. Nah, I did something. Tell me what did I do? You didn't do anything, man. I'm just telling you to it. But like, obviously, I build that suspense way longer. Do you live in Turkey? No. I actually overstayed my visa for like a month because I had such a good time. I actually like Turkey. I'm not going to lie to you. Where can we register for your mother's Quran classes? My mother's Quran classes are now full. They've been packed for the past... I've been saying this for the past year and a half. But since the last video, a lot of people have been asking me to register with the Quran school, blah, 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 this and that. I'm like, listen, mama, let's do a course, a Qaeda Nawrani course, where people perfect their makharij, and then you can take them on, teach them then tajweed, then you can enroll them in your class, so then there's more benefit. So starting off with a course, and yeah, we're going to do like an eight-week course, but the places are limited, man. That's the only problem, because she wants to focus on quality, not quantity. I think we could do both. But anyways... Um, inshallah, I will announce it on my Instagram story. So first come, first serve. Yeah, it's going to be Qaeda Nawraniya. It's going to be of Makhari. It's going to be eight weeks. It's going to be Saturday, Sunday from 10 to 2. There's some more other details, but I don't have them off the top of my head. Be yeah, exciting times. Are you Moroccan? No, I am born and raised in Ireland and my parents are Libyan. How would you like to be remembered when you are no longer alive? I don't know, man, but just obviously... You want to be remembered in a good way because أنتم شهداء الله في أرضه. If people actually witness that you are a good person, that could be your ticket to Jannah. I don't know about this whole known thing because I feel like once you have that mindset, maybe it messes with your intentions because then you're working to have a certain legacy or to be remembered rather than doing things في سبيل الله. I don't know. Could you do both? Could you? Do a few sabillah and to be remembered. But I think if you do anything for sabillah, you will be remembered no matter what. Because for example, when Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari, he gathered uh, al-Jami' al-Sahih, it wasn't known as 
the book of Bukhari. It was known as Al Jama' al Sahih. And then when he passed away, it's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cemented his legacy and they changed the name to, well, I think the name's still the same, but they just, oh, it's known as Sahih al Bukhari. He had his intentions correct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him be remembered and made his legacy live on. So I don't like to think about that too much. I'm not going to lie to you. For me, when you have that thought, it's almost like you're working to be remembered rather than working for the sake of Allah. Azawajal. And it actually reminds me of Hatim al Ta'i, for example, when Udayb ibn Hatim al Ta'i asked the Prophet وسلم, about his father and he says This is a man that wanted something and he gained it and it was to be remembered and he's still remembered and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so just he didn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course he died on kufr so his place is the hellfire but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still gave him what he wanted from his good deeds and his good character and that is for him to be remembered until today لماذا لا تتكلم باللغة العربية؟ أنا أتكلم معك باللغة العربية الآن ولكن محتوايا باللغة الإنجليزية لأن معظم متابعي من بريطانيا وأمريكا وكندا وألمانيا فهي اللغة التي يمكننا جميعا فهمها Someone asked, why don't you not speak in classical Arabic? I'm saying basically most of my followers and most of my audience, you guys, you don't speak in the Arabic language but one of the most important things to actually study your deen and study your religion is to study the Arabic language. And some scholars even say it's fard. I was saying the English language is the number one language, but amongst the Muslims, at least the Arabic language should be number one. We're just speaking about Bukhari, for example. Bukhari ethnically was an Arab, but he was a beyond fluent Arabic speaker. You know, back in the days, it was once you're Muslim, you're able to speak Arabic. Khalas, they go hand in hand. But unfortunately now even the Arabs, they can't speak Arabic. Right, I'm going to end the Q&A here. Apologize if you thought it was short. We'll do a part two, no problem. Bithnillah ta'ala subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. If you haven't liked the video already, go like it. If you're new here, subscribe. And if you are a returning subscriber, Go and listen to the Quran playlist so we can rack up some good deeds. All right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.